Yoking on John 6.27 Do not labor for the food that is perishing, but for the food that is remaining to everlasting life, which the son of Adam shall give you. For the father Elohim has set his seal on him. So they said to him, What shall we do to work the works of Elohim? Yahusha answered and said to them, This is the work of Elohim, that you believe in him who he sent. So they said to him, What sign then would you do, so that we see and believe you? What would you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it has been written, he gave them bread out of the heaven to eat. Therefore Yahusha said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moshe did not give you the bread out of the heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread out of the heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he who comes down out of the heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Master, give us this bread always. And Yahusha said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not get hungry at all, and he who believes in me shall not get thirsty at all. But I said to you that you have seen me and still do not believe. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I shall by no means cast out. Because I have come down out of the heaven, not to do my own desire, but the desire of him who sent me. This is the desire of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me I shall not lose of it, but shall raise it in the last day. In these passages, the Yahudim are referring to the manna that was given to Israel when they came out of Egypt. Yahusha is telling them that he is the true manna, the true bread of Elohim. To understand this, we must first look at the word manna. The true word for manna is Hebrew Strong's 4478, and is pronounced man, and is made up of two Hebrew letters, mem and noon. The letter Mim is a picture of water. It means waves, chaos, movement, nations, blood, spring of the Torah, and wisdom. The letter Noon is a picture of a fish. It means seed, beginning, new life, re-sprout, movement as in life, humble, air, sun, offspring, the number 50, the age of wisdom, faithfulness, and perpetual or continual. The letter Mim has the meaning of water and has the meaning of the word or Torah as seen in these passages in Psalms 119 verse 97 Mim Oh how I love your Torah it is my study all day long 101 I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I might guard your word Psalms 119 103 how sweet to my taste has your word been more than honey to my mouth? The letter noon has the meaning of everlasting as seen in these passages in Psalms 119. 109. My life is in my hand continually, and your Torah I have not forgotten. The word continually has the meaning of noon. Psalm 119, 111. Your witnesses are my inheritance forever for they are the joy of my heart. The word forever in this passage is represented by the letter noon. Psalm 119 verse 112 I have inclined my heart to do your laws forever to the end. The word forever again is for the letter noon. Adiodio, the word manna, which is spelled mem noon, has the meaning of the word everlasting or the everlasting word. This completely coincides with what Yahusha told Hashatan when he was tempted in the wilderness. Matthew Yahu, Matthew 4, 3, And the trier came to him and said, If you are the son of Elohim, command that these stones become bread. But he, answering, said, It has been written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. Yahusha is the bread of life as he spoke in Yochanan John 6.47. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me possesses everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. 
This is the bread which comes down out of the heaven, so that anyone might eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of the heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And indeed, the bread that I give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Yahudim therefore were striving with one another, saying, How is this one able to give us his flesh to eat? And Yahushua therefore said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of Adam and drink his blood, you possess no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is truly food, and my blood is truly drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood stays in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me shall live because of me. This is the bread which come down out of the heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and died. He who eats this bread shall live forever. What Yahusha is telling them is that he is the word, and the eating of his flesh is reading, studying, and meditating on the word. For it is the word of Elohim that gives life. The word given to the Israelites by Moshe were written about Yahusha, and they ate that word but died because for the Torah having a shadow of the good matters to come and not the image itself of the matters was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Otherwise they would not have ceased to be offered because those who served once cleansed would not have had no consciousness of sins. But in those offerings is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. The Torah was given to them as a foreshadowing of the coming Messiah. Every sacrifice is in the likeness of Yahusha. This is why they ate the bread and they died because the true sacrifice that atones for sin is the sacrifice of our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach. And this is why Shaul said, Is the Torah against the promises of Elohim? Let it not be. For if a Torah had been given that was able to make alive, truly righteousness would have been by Torah. But the scripture has shut up all mankind under sin, that the promise by belief in Yahushua Messiah might be given to those who believe. But before belief came, we were being guarded under Torah, having been shut up for the belief being about to be revealed. Therefore the Torah became our trainer unto Messiah in order to be declared right by belief. And after belief has come, we are no longer under a trainer. Yahushua came to bring us the true manna, to show us that he is the word and that every word written by the Torah and the Nebaim were written about him. Yochanan John 5.39 You search the scriptures because you think you possess everlasting life in them, and these are the ones that bear witness of me. Yochanan John 5.45 do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moshe, in whom you have set your expectation. For if you believed Moshe, you would have believed me, since he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how shall you believe my words? Lucas, Luke 24, 44. And he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all have to be filled that were written in the Torah of Moshe and the prophets and Telahim concerning me. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it has been written, and so it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning at Yerushalayim. Every word written is about our Savior, and that is why it's written in Kasson Revelation 1, I am the Aleph and the Ta, beginning and end, says Yahuwah, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. 
The Aleph is the first letter in Hebrew, and the Ta is the last. He is telling us that he is the manifested word of truth, and it is the word read with this understanding that gives life, the understanding that comes from the Ruach HaKadosh. Matif Yahu, Matthew 16.5 And his taught ones came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. And Yahusha said to them, Mind and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they were reasoning among themselves, saying, Because we brought no bread? And Yahusha, aware of this, said to them, O oh, you little of belief, why do you reason among yourselves because you brought no bread? Do you still not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets you picked up? Or the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many large baskets you picked up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? And then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Yahushua came to the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his taught ones, saying, Who do men say the son of Adam is? And they said, Some say Yochanan the Immerser, and others Eliyahu, and others Yermiyahu, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, And you? Who do you say I am? And Shimon Kaipha answered, said, You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. And Yahushua answered, said to him, Blessed are you, Shimon bar Yonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in the heavens. The Pharisees and the Sadducees did not believe in Yahushua, even though the scriptures were written all about him. They even added to the Torah rules that would make people break commands that were set by Yahuwah, this is the leaven, as mentioned in Matthew, Yahuwah, Matthew 15, 4. For Elohim has commanded, saying, Respect your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me has been dedicated, is certainly released from respecting his father or mother. So you have annulled the commands of Elohim by your traditions. Yahusha refers to these teachings as leaven, things that are added that lead men astray from following the commands. We have seen much of this teaching in the modern church system. Leaven is also referred to as wickedness as in 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the entire lump? Therefore cleanse out the old leaven, so that you are a new lump, as you are unleavened. For also Messiah, our Pesach, was slaughtered for us. So then let us celebrate the festival, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Yahusha came to give us the true manna, the unleavened bread of the truth, the revelation that Yahusha is the Messiah, and that everything ever written was written about him, and that belief in him gives us eternal life. The revelation of this is given by the Ruach HaKadosh. 1 Corinthians 12.3 Therefore I make known to you, that no one speaking by the Spirit of Elohim says Yahusha is a curse, and no one is able to say that Yahusha is master except by the set apart Spirit. It was the Ruach that opened Kaipha's eyes to see this revelation in Matthew 16 17. And Yahusha answering said to him, Blessed are you, Shimon bar Yonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in the heavens. In Acts chapter 2, it says, And they were filled with the set-apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. When the crowd heard the set-apart ones speaking in their own language, they mocked them, saying that they were full of new wine, as in verse 13. 
because the set-apart spirit fills us up with joy that can appear strange to others. Ephesians 5.17 So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yahuwah is, and do not be drunk with wine in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the Spirit. When Yahushua took the bread and broke it during Passover and gave it to the Talmudim, he is referring to his body, which is the Word. Matthew Yahu, Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and having blessed, broke it and gave it to the top ones and said, Take, eat, this is my body. By taking of the unleavened bread of Yahushua HaMashiach, the word that was written remains true, but is broken for us. The word that says, the day you eat of it, you shall surely die, for he has died in our place. And now when we eat the bread of his truth, we shall surely live. And taking the cup and giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I shall certainly not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it anew with you in the reign of my Father. This cup that we drink is the Ruach HaKadosh, that when we read the unleavened bread of the truth, the word is revealed to us. The pouring out of the Ruach HaKadosh by his shed blood is a down payment of the good to come. When the sons of Elohim will be manifest at his coming, this is the drinking anew in the reign of Elohim. 2 Corinthians 5.1 For we know that if the tent of our earthly house is destroyed, we have a building from Elohim, a house not made with hands, everlasting in the heavens. For indeed this we groan, longing to put on our dwelling which is from heaven, so that putting it on we shall not be found naked. For indeed, we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we wish to put it off, but to put on the other, so that what is to die might be swallowed up in life. Now he who has prepared us for this same purpose is Elohim, who has given us the Spirit as a pledge of what is to come. Lucas, Luke 19.11 And as they were hearing this, he spoke another parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought the reign of Elohim was about to be manifested straight away. He therefore said, A certain nobleman went to a distant country to receive himself a reign and to return. Many believed at that time that Yahushua was going to be king and was about to start his reign. So he gave them this parable about a nobleman this nobleman, of course, is our master, Yahusha. And calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas and said to them, Trade until I come. But his subjects were hating him and sent a delegation after him to say, We do not wish this one to reign over us. The servants in this passage are his followers, and the delegation who did not want him to reign over them was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But this also includes those who do not believe in him as well. The minas that the servants were given to trade represents the word. The word for mina in this parable is Greek Strong's 3414, which comes from Strong's 4488 mana, which means a measure of weight or money. This word is made up of three Hebrew letters, Mem, Nun, and Aleph, and has the audio meaning of the everlasting word of Yahuwah. So in this parable, the minor represents the word of Yahuwah. This is what they were to share before the master returns. Lucas, Luke 19.15 And it came to be, when he came back, having received the rain, that he sent for these servants to whom he had given the silver, in order to know what each had gained by trading. And the first came, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. 
because you were trustworthy in a small matter, have authority over ten cities. And a second came, saying, Master, your mana has earned five manas. And he said to him also, And you be over five cities. And another came, saying, Master, here's your mana, which I kept laid up in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a hard man. You take up what you did not lay down, and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I shall judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a hard man, taking up what I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow. Why did you not put the silver in the bank? And when I come, I would have collected it with interest. Then he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him and give it to him who possesses ten minas. The one who kept the mina in the handkerchief represents those who study the word and know scripture, but do not try to share the word with others and have kept the word in their hearts. The other servants went out and made other followers, and the word grew by their sharing. Thus the body of Mashiach grew, which represents the bread. The word for bread from the Shamaim is man, and the word for manna in this passage is the bread of Yahuwah. The bread of Yahuwah is Yahusha, the word made manifest. It is by the word of Yahuwah that all men are judged. It is by the manna, the weight, that all men are judged by. For the Father has given all judgment into the hand of Yahusha. Yochanan John 5.22 For the Father judges no one, but has given all the judgment to the Son. Just as Yahusha used the manna as the thing the servants would be judged by. A word that means in the Odeo, the everlasting word of Yahuwah. This completes the writing on the wall that says, Mina, Mina, Tekel, Eparshin, as in Daniel 5.25. This inscription is prophetic of the judgment to come, and by the Odeo means this, Mina, Mina, by the everlasting word of Yahuwah, you will be weighed, tekel, at the covenanted appointed time of the shepherd. A portion. Man's words and man's thoughts will separate him at the time of the everlasting judgment. This is the great divide. Daniel 12.2 and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up, some to everlasting life and some to reproaches and everlasting abhorrence. And those who have insight shall shine like the brightness of the expanse, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. By the word of Yahuwah all men will be judged, represented by the word manna. When you fill your heart with the word of Elohim, it pushes out the leaven of the world. This is the washing of the water of the word. As in the word manna, the very first letter, mem, represents water. And the word washes our walk. Like the water that Yahusha told the woman at the well he would give her to drink. The word gives life. Even though man will die, the word that is in him will live forever. So fill your heart with the unleavened word of truth and live. Yeshayahu Isaiah 45 And the esteem of Yahuwah shall be revealed, and all flesh together shall see it. For the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken. The voice said, Cry out. And he said, What do I cry? All flesh is as grass, and its loving commitment like the flower of the field. Grass shall wither, and the flower shall fade when the spirit of Yahuwah has blown on it. Truly the people is grass. Grass shall wither, the flower shall fade, but the word of our Elohim stands forever. So let the word live in you, and the fountain that wells up to eternal life. May Yahuwah our Elohim bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace.
Shalom.